The Lord be with you. And also with you. Great to see you here this morning. Great to have you joining from wherever you are on the live feed. Our uh, order of service is the order of divine service setting one. You'll find that with the link right there by the feed. Our opening hymn, hymn number 814. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. Let us stand. God's blessings.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if, but if we, we confess, confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. But I have calmed and quieted my soul, like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, hope in the Lord, from this time forth and forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth.
Let us pray. O God, the helper of all who call on you, have mercy on us and give us eyes of faith to see your Son, that we may follow him on the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. Thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, the pregnant woman and she who is in labor together. A great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with pleas for mercy I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. <clears throat> From the letter to the Hebrews, the seventh chapter. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins and then for those of the people, since he did this once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. <laughs> Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. And they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our hymn of the day, Hope of the World. Lutheran Service Book is number 690. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for our meditation this morning, today's gospel from Mark chapter 10. In the name of Jesus, amen. While few men have had more written about them than Martin Luther, there is surprisingly little written about him the last days of his life. One of the few items of note comes from a little scrap of paper that his friends found in his coat pocket. In this note, he had written two short phrases, one in Latin and one in German. Hoc est verum, vir sind alle betle. This is true. We are all beggars. 
And what had this man, whom God had chosen as his special instrument to reform the church, this German monk through whom God had brought the mighty church of Rome to its knees, this pastor to whom God had granted extraordinary gifts to translate, interpret, communicate, and rightly divide the word of truth. What had he concluded after a long time, a long lifetime full of accomplishment? That he and all of us are nothing more than beggars before a holy and gracious God. That we can do nothing but cry to Jesus, receive his gifts, and joyfully follow him. It was just days before Holy Week, days before Jesus would march into Jerusalem to shouts of Hosanna and be led out to cries of crucify him. And Mark continues his narrative with Jesus passing through Jericho, a city roughly 15 miles from Jerusalem. As he and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, that is, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. Partially due to poor hygiene and unsanitary conditions, partly due to a, a superstitious rejection of sound medical advice, blindness was a terribly common thing in Jesus' day. Blindness is a sad affliction in, in any age, but it was especially so in first century Israel. There were no guide dogs, no talking traffic signals, no specialized schools or homes or services. There was no braille enabling blind persons to read. And because no one would hire them for work, they were almost invariably left to beg for their daily bread. To add insult to injury, the blind also lived under the social stigma that their blindness was God's punishment for sin that was either their own sin or the sin of an ancestor who had come before them. These were the conditions under which Bartimaeus lived. And he may have been blind, but he suffered no delusions. He knew he was completely dependent on the mercy of others for his very life. But as blind as Bartimaeus was, there was one thing that by God's grace he could see more clearly than many who had perfect vision. He was unable to work, unable to get to the temple by himself to present sacrifices, but his ears worked just fine, and he used them. And what he had heard was a lot of discussion about a man named Jesus of Nazareth who had traveled throughout the country preaching a message of God's grace, mercy, and forgiveness for sinners and performing miracles of healing the likes of which no one had ever seen before. And while many people saw in this Jesus nothing more than the son of Joseph and Mary, Bartimaeus saw the promised Messiah the Son of God, promised to King David a thousand years earlier who would establish God's kingdom on earth and rescue his people from the misery of sin. Because Bartimaeus believed that this was the one man in all the world who could help him, when he heard that Jesus was passing that way, he began to shout, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. You can learn a lot from a blind beggar. First, while our world is convinced that seeing is believing, Bartimaeus turned this on its head. Believing is seeing. Just think. At least some of the people in that crowd had probably seen Jesus' miracles with their own eyes. And we know for certain that many of the Jewish leaders who crucified Jesus did, but they still didn't believe that he was the Son of God, the promised Savior. Faith doesn't come from seeing. Faith comes from hearing the message of Christ, even today. 
and the absolution. I can't show you the list of your sins that have been washed away by Jesus' blood. You can only hear and trust in Jesus' own promise found in John 20. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. In baptism, to our eyes, nothing more dramatic happens than someone getting a little wet. But scripture declares that the impossible happens in that washing. Baptism now saves you. The bread and wine you receive in the Lord's Supper, look, feel, taste, and smell like normal bread and wine, but don't believe your eyes. Believe Jesus' words. This is my body. This is my blood given and poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Many demand to see proof before they'll believe in Jesus and they'll be waiting all the way to judgment day when the only thing they'll see is the wrath of God at their unbelief. Beloved, let us learn from Bartimaeus. Hearing is believing, and believing is seeing. Secondly, whether we want to admit it or not, we're all like Bartimaeus. We're all beggars before God, completely helpless and unable to save ourselves. We were conceived and born without true fear or faith in God, dead in sin, blind to the gospel, enemies of God. Left to ourselves, we could never obey the least of God's commandments, much less obey all of them to the perfect standards he demands. We are miserable beggars before God who can do nothing but cry for mercy, which is why we begin with confidence in the confession of sins and absolution every week in the divine service. Absolution reminds us that we are beggars. Reminds us of who is serving whom here. I'll give you a hint. We don't come here to serve God. We come here to be served by Jesus. Bartimaeus believed that he needed Jesus to serve him. And so he ignored the crowd's attempts to silence him and shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up, get on your feet, he's calling you. Now you might think that Jesus would have better things to do, people to see, preparations to make as he walked the lonely road to the cross than to be bothered with a miserable blind beggar. In times of suffering and weakness, we often think that Jesus has better things to do than to concern himself with us and our problems. We might think we shouldn't bother him that he must be too busy taking care of the great big important problems and, and the important people in the world. But you know what? We'd be wrong. There's no problem too big and no believer too small for Jesus because he came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus came to hear and help beggars, beggars, like Bartimaeus, beggars like you and me. Bartimaeus didn't waste any time. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. Now that cloak was quite possibly Bartimaeus' only earth pos earthly possession. It was the roof over his head and the mattress under his back. It was his shade tree and his pantry. And yet, at Jesus' invitation, he threw it aside to run to Jesus, whom he believed could give him everything he needed and more. 
He wouldn't let nothing keep him from Jesus. Oh, dear friend, what's hindering you? You know, we too have a standing invitation from Jesus. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Is it pride that's getting in the way? I can handle this myself. I don't need God. Is it embarrassment? I shouldn't have to ask for help. I should be stronger than this. Is it doubt or unbelief? Not even God can help me out of this. Or maybe it's guilt or shame. Jesus knows what I've done, what I've said, what I've thought. Why in heaven's name would he want to help a miserable sinner like me? Whatever it is, beloved, remember this. Coming to Jesus for help is not about you, your worthiness or unworthiness. It's about Him, His mercy, His power, His promises, His love. Remember, we're all beggars with nothing to offer and everything to ask. And Jesus welcomes beggars. Here's the proof. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. And the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Think about the guts it took to make that request. Bartimaeus wasn't asking for a ride or or for beer money or for food. He was asking for the impossible but he was convinced that this was God's son standing before him. The son of David that God promised would come specifically to open eyes that are blind and release those who sit in darkness. Jesus answered Bartimaeus' bold and impossible request, saying, go your way. Your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight. Jesus gave Bartimaeus an impossible gift. He gave him his sight. Why? The actual wording that Jesus used here was, your faith has saved you. How? Through self-actualization? You know, if you believe it, you can achieve it? No. By leading him to the only one who could actually heal him. Bartimaeus' faith was nothing more and nothing less than a beggar's open hand, receiving the gift Jesus would graciously give. Bartimaeus' faith saved him because it led him to beg from the right person. Saving, healing, justifying faith doesn't do anything. It simply receives what Jesus freely gives. Well, Bartimaeus' faith didn't stop there. He followed Jesus along the road. Now remember, this is just days before Holy Week. Jesus' road is leading him to Jerusalem, to the hornet's nest of those who wanted him dead, a fact of which Bartimaeus was undoubtedly aware. Jesus' road was leading to the cross, to suffering and pain and persecution, not only for Jesus, but for all who were bold enough to follow him and confess his name. But Bartimaeus did it. Because even though he would no longer have to beg for his daily bread, 
He still needed Jesus to suffer and die for his sins. He was still a spiritual beggar. He still needed what only Jesus could give him. Sadly, that's a lesson that so many people forget. There are people in every age who behave more like the nine lepers in Luke 17, who once they got what they wanted from Jesus, turned their backs on him and walked away. Beloved, let us never forget that after we've come to Jesus in our time of need, after he has answered our cry for mercy, after he has assured us that our sins are forgiven and heaven is ours, we're still and will always be beggars. We never outgrow our begging Jesus to provide everything from clothing to food to forgiveness and salvation. From the day we were brought to the font as helpless infants to the day we take our last breath, we remain beggars who must rely fully on Jesus' mercy. But here's the good news. Jesus' invitation to receive his gifts still stands. Even though we won't see him walking by on the street, he yet promises to meet us right here where his word is proclaimed and his sacrament is distributed. This is why we come to church, folks. This is where beggars like us come to receive the gifts Jesus freely gives. And receiving those gifts Gratefully and faithfully is how we joyfully follow him. Luther was right. We are all beggars. Beggars who can do nothing but cry to Jesus for mercy. Receive what he wants to give. And joyfully follow him all the way to eternal life. Thank God Jesus has time and mercy in abundance for beggars like us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please stand. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. It's at this time that we'll have the offering plates brought forward to be presented before the altar of God. And if you've uh, got a special prayer request you'd like us to consider, we have these cards in front of you. If you haven't filled it out, you've got about a minute to put something on there now. After the uh, plates are brought forward, the elder on duty will receive those and bring them to me. Just hold them up so you can see that you have one. Thank you.
Please rise for the prayer of the church. Hear our cries and be attentive to the voice of our pleas, O Lord, for the sake of Jesus Christ, the Son of David. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Send laborers into your harvest, Lord, and preachers to gather your elect from the farthest parts of the earth. Sustain all pastors and missionaries faithful in their callings. Bless our schools and teachers our congregations and their servants. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Strike down the haughty, O Lord of hosts, and every hostile voice that would rebuke the voice of faith with its cries and prayers. Uphold the protection of our nation and its leaders in honest service for the good of the people, especially that the gospel may be preached and heard without hindrance. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, save your people and be a father to your Israel, the Holy Christian Church. Give courage to the hearts of all who cry to you for mercy, especially Dan Smoosh, Scott Shera, Jerry P. Otter, Lorna Forbes, Lana Gast, Ralph Lohr, the Wendler family, Ken Schwerbel, Scott Donchie, Rosie Michael, Iris Gast, Joyce and Paul Fega, Phil Conrad, Sandy Romer, Scott Steenport, Caleb Monteufel, Dominic Hall, Graydon Tashner, Norb Pomerenke, Aubriana Cox, Gloria Williamson, Sam Cook, Shannon Braun, Karen Lambert, Liz Sweeney, Brooke Schrader, Judy Krause, Lynn Olson, Pastor Jerry Stecker, Roman, Flora, and Ksenia Tarenko, Jim Schrader, Lori Dodson, Jim Perry, Mona Barkey, Ronald Vircho Sr., Joyce Vircho, Brenda Kempf, Rose Kozlowski, Pastor Ronald Meyer, Joan Reinke, Steve Reinke, Tom Drum, Michael Hastings, Merle Weber, Dennis Durkee, Pastor Timothy Kinney, Michelle Mahoney, Jeff Dion, Sue Maynard, Donna Meeks, Sally Bolin, Kathy Rigotti, Diane Olson, Frank Erdman, Alan Monteufel, Debbie Monteufel, Shirley Fleischer, Dan Shale, and Ann Keller. We also lift up to you the families of Pastor Dale Trimberger and Gordon Eckrick, who passed into your eternal presence this week. Give them steadfast faith and be pleased to grant them your peace that they may follow you now and into everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless those celebrating birthdays this week, Sherry Bricko Tobin, Mary Conrad, Philip Conrad, Kurt Wendler, Dylan Wick, Betty Allen, Christine Kohler, Craig Thomas, Ian Thomas, Jim Whitman, and Samantha Looker, and those with wedding anniversaries, Andrew and Heather Cleveland. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you for Christian parents. May they always turn to you for strength, guidance, and refuge, continually praising you for the great gifts you have given them and their children, modeling for them what it means to trust in your mighty works of salvation and provision, never forsaking you, and having the assurance that you will never abandon them in their task of passing the flame of faith to the next generation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Giving Lord, we ask your blessing upon our stewardship effort. Encourage your people to participate in the meetings and to turn their hearts to you that they may ever walk more closely with you and be led to serve you in love through the means with which you have blessed them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give eyes of faith to all who commune this day, that believing Christ's promise in his testament, they would discern the true body and blood distributed here in the sacrament, and so taste and see that you are good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name of the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated. I have just a, a, a few announcements, one of which I have to step back here and grab this. Next weekend, one of my dear friends, Alfonso Espinosa, who is a, a pastor out in California. He's also a faculty member on uh, the faculty of, Con of Concordia University in Irvine, California, classmate of mine at the seminary. He's written a number of books. This is his latest one uh, called Faith That Engages the Culture. It's the second in a series. First one was called Faith That Sees Through the Culture. He's going to be here with us next weekend. He's in the area to, to be a speaker at a Reformation conference, but he has Sunday morning to be with us. So he's gonna come and worship with us uh, on Sunday morning. And, uh, and then I've asked Dr. Espinoza to hold forth during the Bible study hour. Uh, these books will be available. He, he had a box of them sent to us uh, at his cost, which is Instead of about $12 or $15 a copy, it's going to be $9.60. So if you want one, let me know. I'll have them downstairs for Bible study this morning. So uh, that's, that's announcement number one. Secondly, uh, I have uh, something here from the Board of Stewardship. They want to thank those of you who have attended the Sharing God's Blessings Stewardship Presentations and for the, the positive feedback that we've gotten from these things. We're so pleased and thankful to God that this has been a blessing to many of you. If you haven't yet registered, please respond to the contacts that you've received from the board members. And uh, they, they conclude with, again with a Bible passage, which they always have some great ones. This is from my favorite chapter of the entire Bible, Romans chapter eight, where St. Paul writes, for I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen and hallelujah. Uh, one final thing, November 3rd, it's a Wednesday, uh, at 7.30 p.m. is going to be the first rehearsal of choir for the season. We're gonna start looking at Christmas music and a few other things, so please contact Tim Roining to let him know you'd like to be a part of that, and please be encouraged. Uh, if, you, if you can carry a tune at all, or maybe you, you can't, go ahead and, and uh, step up and join the choir. We'd love to have your voice uh, joining in that effort. So that's Wednesday, November 3rd, 7.30, so right after the Wednesday service. I guess that's it. Let's sing our closing hymn which is 
hymn number 921 in Lutheran service book on what has now been sown. God's blessings on your week. How are we doing this morning?